Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I will discuss with you about neural control and coordination. Neural control that means control by the nervous system is important. Each and every cell is governed by nervous system. The control which comes in various forms becomes important and its coordination is further important. Our body has so many cells, so many organs and organ systems. They all have to work independently as well as they have to coordinate with other systems. And this kind of coordination can be achieved only through neural control. So, it becomes important for us to understand what do we mean by neural control and coordination. Organ systems in our body must be coordinated to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis can be maintained only when all organs and all organ systems are working in a systematic methodical manner for which neural control becomes an important part. Coordination is a process through which two or more organs interact and complement the functions of one another. I can explain this particular point by giving you one or two examples. You know about kidney, the functioning of kidney. Kidney can function only if blood is flowing through it which will be filtered. That means circulatory system is coming to kidney function and kidney and blood they are working together or in other words the excretory system and the circulatory system they are working together. At the top of this the nervous control is there on kidney also on circulatory system also on heart also. That means all the systems are working together to make one function possible. Take example of elementary canal. When you eat food you are using your mouth your tongue, your teeth, then the food is going to elementary canal, enzymes are there to digest it, then you are absorbing it, then absorbed food is going to the cell and there it is burning and giving you energy and burning is taking place in the presence of oxygen. That means elementary canal could function in the presence of blood system and also in the presence of respiratory system and at the top of that nervous system. So in other words all the systems in our body are linked to each other and this linking takes place due to neural control because messages are going through nerves through total nervous system. Neural system provides an organized network of point to point connections for quick coordination. This is another important point to understand. If there is linking of different systems, then it is also important they should be very fast. If it is taking very long time, then one system is working, other is waiting, then other is working, third is waiting. And if that is the way it is working, then the end result is not going to be the way we want. So, the action of nervous system or neural control should be point to point and very fast. And it can work very fast only if the message is going through nerves, through impulses, through stimulus. And that is why neural system provides an organized, a systematic, a methodical network of point to point connection for quick coordination. And it is very well settled in our body from which point what will go where. The neural system is composed of highly specialized cells called neurons. The neuron is a smallest structural and functional unit of nervous system. It is also called a nerve cell. A nerve cell basically a cell but is having a very different structure. You can have a look on nerve cell. It has a body, it has axon, it has processes called dendrites. The cell which is having so many processes has some 
purpose to have these processes. There is a well defined nucleus. There are nissel granules in the cytoplasm of the cell and from the cytoplasmic part are coming out various small processes which we call dendrites and also a very long process, single long process we call axon. A nerve cell is connected to another nerve cell through this axon. Axon will end on the dendrite of next nerve cell to establish the connection. Then axon of second nerve cell will end on the dendrite of third nerve cell and that is how a wire like arrangement is made. The nerve cells can be categorized into various categories depending upon how many processes it is having. A nerve cell can be unipolar, bipolar, multipolar and so on. If I say the nerve cell is unipolar, I will mean that it has only one axon, no dendrite. If I say the nerve cell is bipolar, I mean that it has two processes, one is axon and there is one dendrite. If I say multipolar, then it has one axon and many dendrites. So what I mean that axon is always one. Dendrite may be there or may not be there. There may be one dendrite, there may be two dendrites, three dendrites, but axon is always one. Dendrites are the projections which will receive axon of another nerve cell and make a junction and then receive the message from axon of the previous neuron and this message comes to dendrite of the next nerve cell. The message from dendrite goes to body of nerve cell, then it travels through axon and axon terminal has some branches which will end on dendrite of next nerve cell and will pass on the message. That means this linking of nerve cell is working like an electric wire where message is going from one point of the body to another point and these connections are well defined in the body from which nerve cell the axon will terminate where and where the nerve will terminate and where it will take curve and return to the particular organ. In this the conduction of nerve impulse through axon or through nerve now in question depends on many ions like sodium ion, potassium ion, also protein sometimes and some neurotransmitters. Calcium plays an important role in nerve conduction and that is why it is important for us to take a kind of food which is rich in calcium or calcium products. Coming to human neural system, the kind of nervous system or neural system we have. For the sake of studying, we can divide our nervous system into two major parts, CNS, the central nervous system and PNS, the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system will include brain, and the spinal cord. Dear students, you know that brain is located in the skull, in the head area and it is protected very well by meninges, the dura mater and the pia mater. Pia mater is the meninges just outside the brain and then there is arachnoid layer and then comes the dura mater. Between these meninges, there is fluid which protects our brain from any jerk or any hit on the head. This brain which is very nicely protected continues in the form of a tail kind of structure we call a spinal cord which runs through our spinal region. You are aware of vertebrae present in the spinal cord, in the vertebral column and in this vertebrae there is a central canal through which spinal cord will pass. 
In other words, our backbone is in the form of so many small bones called vertebrae. Each vertebra has central canal and those central canals of each vertebra are placed one above the other and through this central canal is passing our spinal cord. So our spinal cord is also protected by vertebrae. This is important because our nervous tissue is very soft, very sensitive and it should not be damaged by any means and hence bony coverage is given to brain also, to spinal cord also and it is making central nervous system. Now all major centers are in the brain like center for respiration, center for a hearing or sight, for heartbeat, for respiratory center. All the centers are present in the brain. That means brain is centrally controlling all the organ systems and their functioning. The spinal cord takes care of reflexes like our hands, our hind legs, any activity we are doing through limbs, walking, running, doing some work, writing. These all activities are controlled by spinal cord. So spinal cord is important. Suppose it is damaged at a particular point, then one hand may not work or one leg may not work. So all those reflexes can be lost if there is injury to a spinal cord. So central nervous system, which is including brain and the spinal cord, is controlling nervous functioning centrally. I did say the spinal cord will take care of reflex action, but the spinal cord itself is under control of brain. So even those kind of functionings are controlled by brain tissues. So this was about the central nervous system. Coming to PNS, peripheral nervous system. Dear students, you can very well understand that our body is not over with brain and spinal cord. We have so many cells, millions of cells in our body doing so many different kind of functions. The heart cell is helping in heartbeat, the kidney cell is helping in filtration, then spleen cell is helping in filtration of blood again for cleaning purposes. So each organ, each cell is functioning differently and each cell should be innervated, should have a nerve ending. That means just brain and spinal cord cannot reach every cell directly. It will take some help of some other nerves to reach to distant cell and that is our peripheral nervous system which will arise from cell nervous system and will reach to all the cells of the body. So the peripheral nervous system which is made of nerves, peripheral nerves, the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, cranial nerves are coming from brain, spinal nerves are coming from spinal cord which will form major part of peripheral nervous system and these nerves will supply to each and every cell of the body. So children we have understood about the functioning of neural system and also about central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. With this, we come to the end of this session. Thank you.